Hello! Now in this video, I want to talk about multi-factor authentication. So if you already know everything there is to know about MFA, this is the video that you'll want to share with everybody in your life who needs to know about MFA. We're probably used to this by now. Many of us will be used to typing in six digits from either a physical token or a mobile phone app that we have when we're looking to log into a website, especially ones that we want to keep a little bit secure. But in this video, we're gonna talk about why we do that and why what some of us do when we're doing that isn't actually MFA, isn't actually multi-factor authentication. So let's jump into this. Let's think about for the moment, I want to log into a website. Well, if I think about sort of an idealistic world where we trust everybody, maybe I just turn up to that website, I type in my name and hit go. And then the website knows it's me and I get to work with whatever I've got configured on that website, whatever I'm doing. Of course, in the real world, we don't do that because I don't trust that nobody else will type in Mike on that website and assume my identity. So Mike's okay for telling the website who I am, but I can't authenticate, I can't say for certain to that website that it is me logging in because anybody could have that username. So what do we do? Yes, of course, we add a password in. So this password now is something that you don't know. In fact, more importantly, from an MFA, from a factor of authentication point of view, it's something that I know. So a password is the first type, it's the first factor of authentication that we typically use when we're logging into a website. The username and then something I know, which is my password. Now, if we want to go more secure than that, what can we do? Well, we could add in another password. So let's just say I type in my name, a password, and then another password. Does that make it more secure? Well, not really. So if you think about it, two passwords, it's really just the same as one password. You could sort of concatenate them on together and have one really long password. It doesn't really change the security of logging into that website because both of the things, both of the passwords are the same factor. They're both something I know. So what we need to do is we need to introduce a secondary factor, something which is different from that. And the most common one is something I have. So if I have a mobile phone with a six digit character on it, which generates somehow magically in the back end and I can type in that. Well, I can only do that if I actually have this phone. And so that is a secondary factor of authentication. So I type in my name, I type in my password, which is the first factor, something I know, and then I type in this six digit character, which is something I have. So even me, if I don't have my phone on me, if I don't have the token that generates that code, I can't log in either. So I've proven that I have this extra step, this extra factor of authentication. And there are others as well. You can introduce even another one on top of that or another one instead of that. And that's something I am. So this is biometric information. So if you used your fingerprint or an iris scan or some other kind of uh, analysis of me physically. So that's another factor of authentication. So those are the three. Those are the three common ones. Something I know, which is a password, something I have, which is the token, something I am, which is my fingerprint. Okay, so those are multiple factors. And typically, as we know, we use our username, a password, and then the token. So how does this even work? Well, it depends a little bit on the type of token you're using. First of all, if you're using a physical token, then when you get that token, it has a cryptographic key put inside of that token when it's manufactured. And so the service that you get that token from already knows what that cryptographic key is that's inside of this device. And every time that you type in this six digit characters, what is that? Well, that's actually a hash of the time or of a counter value from this token that's been passed through the cryptographic key that it has inside its memory. And the point here is that nobody has access to that cryptographic key, not even you, apart from the service that you're logging into. They do have the other part to that cryptographic key so they can verify whether the six digits that you are producing actually match something which could be coming from your token. That's the point. So this cryptographic key is inside of this token at the point of manufacture. And that's kind of really important. We'll loop back to that in just a second. 
Now, if you've got a mobile phone, you'll know that this works slightly differently. If you've got an app on there that you've set up to do these six characters or these six numbers, well, typically what you'll do is you'll scan a QR code. And that QR code essentially is transmitting the cryptographic key into your phone. So right now, we can see that there is actually a subtle difference in the security level between a soft token running on your phone and the physical token you can have in your hand. The difference is that the cryptographic key is known in the outside world at some point. Put simply, if there was somebody else in the room with you at the time that you scanned that QR code, they could scan that QR code as well and have a copy of your factor of authentication. And so it's good, but it's not as good as having a physical device where to get the cryptographic key out of that physical device, that's really hard stuff. You're essentially taking the thing apart, shaving down the silicon inside of it, using an electron microscope to try and figure out where the digits are on that device. And by this point, we'll know that we've lost control of it and we'll have reset that anyway. So really, a hardware token is about as secure as you can get in the normal world for securing whatever it is that you're logging into. Now, at the beginning of this video, I mentioned that some of you using MFA actually might not be. And this is to do with software tokens and how we use them. So a great example, a great benefit of why you can have the soft tokens on a phone is that you can have them in a service which then synchronizes to other devices you have, whether it be your desktop and your phone, maybe another phone, a website that you can log into. A great example of this is 1Password. Now, 1Password is a great service, but if you look in 1Password, when you're creating one of these MFA tokens, it doesn't actually call it MFA, multi-factor authentication. What it calls it is OTP, a one-time password. Because whilst it works in the same kind of way, those codes are available in multiple places. Remember back to the beginning, what is the factor? The factor is something I have. Is this token something I have? Well, actually no, because it's synced to all these different devices. It's up somewhere in the cloud. And so we've eroded a sense of security from this. It's not really multi-factor at this point. And in many cases, if I had the passcode to your phone, then I might have access to not only the password for this site, but also the multi-factor authentication and potentially the email, which is in the back of all of this account, which I can use to click the link to say, I forgotten my password, let's reset everything. So keep this in mind if you're trying to secure something really sensitive. Services like 1Password, as great as they are, they provide you with one-time passwords, not multi-factor authentication. Now, does this really matter? Well, at the end of the day, that's up to you and to the, your risk profile and whatever you're trying to manage. But if this is a corporate account, if there's a corporate credit card behind the scenes of this account that you're trying to log into, if the risk is significant that you might lose all of your customer data, then I would say, yes, that's a high risk. You shouldn't be using a soft token. You shouldn't be using a one-time password. You should be using a physical token to really secure that environment. However, on the other hand, if this is the best you have, if this soft token one-time password is the best you have, and if you don't use that, then you're not going to use anything else, well, it's definitely better than a password by itself. So there it is. I just wanted to explain a little bit about multi-factor authentication, what it actually is, how it works, and why there is a bit of a gotcha with a one-time password. It is subtly different. I hope you've got value from this video. I hope it's helped you to understand a little bit more about how MFA works. If it did, then please give me a like and show everybody else that this video is worth a watch. Please consider subscribing to this channel too for more things like this, but also cloud, machine learning, robotics, technology in general. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.